Hey family, I'm Stephanie Monday. I'm Habasia, helping your brothers and sisters in Africa, as well as the Creole Grill test. How y'all doing today? I hope you're doing fabulous no matter where you are in the world. I'm sitting on my front porch in Galveston, y'all. And it reminds me of being in the forest, y'all. Cause the birds just talking away and singing in the background. And whenever I put this camera on, I never know if they're going to be cooperative or not with the background noises. But today, y'all, they showed up and showing out. I hope y'all can hear them. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome to my channel. And if you're coming back, welcome back. I appreciate and love all of you guys. If you have not subscribed, please do. Which waiting on y'all is free. <laughs> oh, I'm telling y'all. I sprayed myself with some orange oil that I made myself that's supposed to be natural insect repellent. We shall see if it works today. Cause I've been fighting with the mosquitoes and I definitely have some mosquito repellent in the package, but you know how you put it somewhere for safekeeping and then you wonder, where did you put it? <laughs> so my backup one, I have to actually look for them. But anyway, guys, I am so glad that I got a comment and a request. And the comment was actually about giving advice on uh, how to fight self-isolation no not isolation like you think you have something and you're trying to stay away from people so you don't give them what you have this is self-isolating as for being an introvert almost you know staying at home not being around a whole lot of other people Hold on for a second. I needed to close my front door, y'all, because I didn't want the flies going in there because it had like a little crack in it. But anyways, they said that they wanted to know how not to be self-isolating. And they said that I seem to be comfortable around people no matter where I go. And so I said, well, it's hard for me to just give somebody advice on how to be different than what they are. So y'all, I just had to look it up so I could try to give some advice. <laughs> Cause the first thing, I had to go back to the backyard and now look like they bringing their noise up front y'all. Well, guys, before I went to the backyard, the person who was cutting the grass stopped using the weed eater, but now he's going to use the blower. So hold on. Well, guys, I'm in the backyard now in Galveston, Texas. And I was talking about self-isolation, which we can consider maybe some form of being an introvert. And it's hard for me to be able to give advice on it only because I was raised to be an extrovert, maybe hyper-socialized because I lived in a, a family house, y'all. It was an extended family house. I lived with my grandparents on my mother's side, my aunt, my uncle, 
my mama then at first, and then later on she had her own place with her husband. Y'all know I didn't do very good going to stay with her. I was always crying, making her take me back to my grandmother's or put me on the bus when I was old enough so I could pull the bus cart <laughs> when I see my grandmother waiting on me on that corner. So I always loved to be in, uh, around people. And I was raised on the front porch, uh, interacting with the people that passed by. <laughs> And we was ghettoites, y'all. So <laughs> whether it was cussing out the people that passed by and they reinforced my bad behavior by giving me money or either calling them Mr. Easter Rabbit and still getting money. I was conditioned, y'all. That's conditioned response, so. I learned at a young age that people like me and I, I like people, so I'm a people person, y'all. But I did look it up. If I don't know something and y'all have a concern, I try my best to look it up so I can do my best to tell you something that might help you. The first thing I can say is don't compare yourself to me. Whether you're a senior or a solo traveler, please don't try to compare yourself to me because our life experiences are different. Y'all know I married a Nigerian, y'all, so he wasn't Kunta Kente for sure. He said I was more African than he was because he was colonized and he loved being in the West and he didn't really want to go back to Nigeria other than to visit. And that's true, you know? And me, I always wanted to go back even if I wanted to be a midwife back in the day so I could go back and work with the mamas and the babies. I always think of mamas and babies together, pregnancies and babies, stuff like that. I always see one with the other as a continuum. And I thought that he was going to be a farm D so he could uh, diagnose people and give them the medication. They call it a dispenser. But that didn't happen, y'all. But that's neither here nor there. That's just to say that they gave me an experience of being around people of different cultures. So that's how I became who I am, y'all. Different cultures, different places. I've been in lots of different organizations. I grew up Catholic. That's social in itself, y'all. <laughs> it's going to Catholic school and wearing uniforms and being part of a group and going to church early in the morning before you go to school. <laughs> it was all conditioning, y'all. Everybody made their first communion, confirmation. It was all conditioning, y'all. So I've, I've been conditioned to be around lots of people all the time. And I can enjoy my solitude. I can, but when I do, I make sure that I talk to my friends on the phone, even if it's with WhatsApp. And while I'm here, I talk to my friends and my uh, family on the phone, whether it's um, WhatsApp or regular telephone since I'm back in the USA, you know? And now I'm socialized also by interacting with all of you on YouTube. And they say, if you're doing something because you love it, that you would do it without getting any money, well, 
for me is YouTube. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I find people that have things in common with me. So when I go to Houston, I was already a part of the Pan-African community there. And even when I, I moved there, once I bought a house there, I already had friends that I made over the years going to Kwanzaa celebrations and, and different things given by the Pan-African community. I also took classes there. I took ceramic classes at a Jewish community center. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> I was the only chocolate thing taking a class at first. And then later on, one of the latest companions, you know, the old lady companions who was black, she allowed, she was allowed to take the class even though she was working as a companion with the lady that was in the class. So it's interesting. And I also took things like jewelry making in different parts of Houston. So it's a diverse group of people that I put myself around because of my different hobbies that I'm interested in. Even when I took a uh, knitting class and line dancing and glass fusion. And I even took stained glass class, y'all. It's very diverse, but the people had similar stuff to what I had in common. And that's what the articles that I read about this was saying that if you're somebody who finds it hard to go out there and interact with people, that you have to first think, what's your, what's your goal? Do you, are you really gonna accomplish something by getting out there and going in the first place? It's like if somebody invites you to something, are you gonna go? Are you gonna be happy that you went? And if the answer is yes, then by all means go. But if the answer is no, you don't have to feel guilty about not going. And you don't have to feel like you're doing a self-isolation at that point. It's just part of self-care. So it's like, you gotta learn to be comfortable in your own skin. Fake it till you make it, so to speak. I remember when I got divorced, I really wasn't used to going out anywhere by myself because when I was young, we did safety in numbers whether I was with my cousins or my friends. So I really didn't know about going out by myself. And that was the thing back then when you were older that you did go out by yourself. It was okay. You didn't have to wait for somebody to call you. So I would go to different venues that I had an interest in, whether it was the Carabana Club or any other club. If the music was what I liked to hear and it was live, y'all, I was there. And even if it wasn't live, I was there. Was it a happy hour or no happy hour? And eventually you go somewhere. It's like in the movies. People get to know your name or see your face. They know you can dance and they ask you to dance. So you get pretty popular, y'all. <laughs> Eventually, you're at the point where you don't have to go out single anymore. <laughs> but now that I'm older, when I was in the Gambia, I started going to Mo2 because it had that type vibe, you know you could get your Jamaican food and have your Jamaican coffee and just sit there and watch the cars pass by and watch the people pass by 
So that was a way to get me out of the house. Because otherwise, I, I was in the house most of the time. And a lot of the time, y'all, it was during that COVID. So it was a good idea to be in self-isolation. <laughs> but right now, where well, things are like out of love, we can go out there and be more social. And I say, if you like to drink tea or something, my favorite is chamomile. Helps me to be calm and relaxed. Because they say sometimes when you don't go out and see people a lot, you might have difficulty sleeping. So that might be an option to drink some tea before you go to bed, whichever tea that helps you to relax. Maybe burn you a little lavender incense. Talk to a family member or a friend, whether it be on YouTube, Messenger, WhatsApp, whatever. Reach out to somebody that you trust with your heart. You hear me? Reach out to somebody that you can trust with your heart. Because it's not just going out interacting with people. It's interacting with people who actually care. And I say when I go out, I'm friendly because I'm from Texas, y'all. <laughs> and I'm Creole. And we speak to people. If they don't speak to us first, you know, hey, how you? Fine, and you? Well, sometimes you speak to people and they don't even speak back. And you know what? It don't hurt my feelings any because I know I did my part. And even with people who I treat with a long hand, a spoon, as my grandmother would say, if they speak to me, I still speak to them. I will. I will. And if somebody wanted to go to Africa with me, even though we hadn't interacted very closely in years, I still give them a chance and take them on that trip. Because I'll be thinking, they might die or I might die. If I don't hurry up and take them to Africa, because I'm telling you, that's something unusual for anybody that I know to be asking me to go to Africa with me on my next trip. So, like I said, put yourself out there, be friendly. If people speak back, that's good. If they don't, they're not important anyway. Start seeing life from the point of view that some will, some won't. So what, who's next? You, you be good to people because it's good for you. It's good karma that you're putting out there. And when you treat people the way you want to be treated, if they treat you that way, that's good. And if they don't, you don't have to be around them that much. It doesn't make you antisocial to be around people that's not interested. But anyways, I was saying the things in an article and it was saying pretty much the stuff I was saying. Connect with groups that you have something in common with. You can join Patreon so you'll be a part of Habasia. If you care about your brothers and sisters in Africa, whether you ever take a trip with us in person or you just doing it through watching us on YouTube or making a special donation so we can do a virtual planting a tree in your name or in the name of your loved one. If we plant some seeds that you provided, you don't know that you're responsible for that positive light going out there in the universe.
If you want to learn a new language, sign up for an, a class without without credit, non-credit courses. The courses I took in Texas City, the program is called 50 Plus Program, Lifelong Learning. We only paid $15 a class per semester. You know, we all trying not to get Alzheimer's, y'all. <laughs> trying to build more neural pathways. So even if we have the deterioration, we'll have more neural receptors so we won't have symptoms. So that's it. You go out there, y'all, and you just do it. Take that class. You're interested in some kind of hobby same difference y'all whether it's gardening or needlepoint basket making jewelry making whatever is probably given in your community you just have to google it and find out where where it is and then sign up for it and just do it and when you're there walk in look like you <laughs> and people will respond to you. Me, y'all know, Africa anything is right up my alley. My juju from the Gambia. I was just surprised that it was a retention after all those years of being converted to different religions. My bracelet, y'all, I wear stuff. So people will see me as me. I like bright glasses. I like colorful scarves. I like colorful everything. I love trees, y'all. So you see my shirt. Have my baobab tree on there. So being yourself lots of times is a a conversation starter, you know? Because people will ask you where you get your earrings. I like your glasses. I like your colorfulness. <laughs> Just don't take a compliment as an insult, you know? No matter what somebody tells you about what you're wearing. Like, oh, I enjoyed you sitting in front of me. All those bright colors, I really enjoyed that. Just say thank you. <laughs> Not everything should be taken as any insult. Most things are not even given out in that fashion. So just me being me most of the times gets the attention of people. Even when I used to wear my afro and my bantu knots, people want to know about my hair. They want to know about how I got it styled, stuff like that. Wrap my head, they want to know how you did it because they feel like they can't. And all I can say is, yes, you can. You don't have to wait till corns of time to feel like you can let your hair down. Just be yourself. You are your best self just the way you are. Not tomorrow. Today. <laughs> you don't have to lose 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds. Nothing. You're fine, just like you are. You don't have to have any special hair weaves, wigs, makeup. <sighs> you don't need none of that. You are perfect, just the way you are. And you know... If you can just see everybody the way you want them to see you, they will be a reflection of you and you them. And you'll see little by little when you step out that house, it'll make you happy. Even the thought of leaving the house will make you happy. Do some self-talk to yourself. Like my mama used to tell my 
middle son. You can do it. I know you can do it. Because he used to not want to talk, y'all. He said, let his big brother do all his talking for him. His brother would say, Granny, he wants this. Granny, he wants that. And she say, quit speaking for him. Let him speak for himself. And one day, she said she heard him mimicking her in another room, saying, you can do it. I know you can do it. <laughs> so she knew at least that he heard her and that, yeah, he could speak. He wasn't deaf. He just chose not to speak because it was easier because his brother was doing it for him. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I say, y'all. Make sure that you're getting out of the house for the right reasons. Find groups that have things in common with you. Don't be afraid to start up a conversation, even if it's just, hey, how are you? And if somebody asks you where you from, you can tell the truth and say, I'm from Galveston, Texas, USA. I'm Creole. I'm Tika by African Ancestry. By Ancestry.com, I'm majority Nigerian and Cameroonian, but I still have Senegal and Senegambia in me. I have lots of different ancestors that I share DNA with. I feel like I could say I am because they are. And that's the same thing with you, y'all. You get in where you fit in. Just remember, you have every right to be wherever you are. And just know the culture and the climate of the country that you're in. So you won't stick out like a sore thumb. Be yourself, but also respect the mores of the community. The majority of the time when I'm in the Gambia, I, I wear my head covering. It's in solidarity with the sisters there that's predominantly uh, practice Islam. So even though they wear the whole th thing most of the time, you know, whether they wearing the hijab or the head covering, I'm in solidarity with the head covering for them. And I don't make any jokes about whatever people believe in and, and their dress codes. While I'm here, sometimes I wear my Afro when I go somewhere, but I'm still always wearing African dress because that's what I do, y'all. That's just me. Right now, while I'm with a t-shirt and some pants, I'm at home, it's casual, it's, it's me. But I'm doing this video for y'all, so I'm trying my best to tell y'all how y'all can just go out there and get involved, give compliments freely, be a good listener. And they said, slow your roll on social media not my channel though y'all y'all subscribe like comment and share my videos but otherwise they say you slow down on the social media and actually go outside and interact with people in person or pick up their phone and, and call me if you my friend and my family you got my my number. Y'all can call me. I'm here. And y'all know when I'm in the airport, I talk to strangers. 
I talk to strangers everywhere I go. I make friends everywhere I go. That's my personality though, y'all. I was a nurse. Like I say, I grew up doing that. So you can't be me overnight or ever. I'm 69, you know. Took 69 years to be me. Just be the best you and you and you that you can be. And that's good enough. If your goal is to go out there and be more sociable and not feel like you're socially isolating yourself, y'all, just make small goals at first. Only you know what they are. <laughs> Write them down. Visualize it. Y'all, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> just don't want it to sting me while I'm sitting here. But anyway probably a, a, a bee, look like a bee. But anyway, I don't want it to think I'm a flower. Maybe I'm so colorful. <laughs> you might have thought it was a flower and was trying to get some honey for me. But anyway, y'all, it's, it's going on to the real flowers now. But anyway, you write down your list of what you want to do, and then you do it little by little, even if it's just walking around the block and saying hello to your neighbors that's out there. Somebody gonna tell you hello back and somebody probably speak first. Most people are friendly, y'all. And just smile, just smile. Even if you have to imagine that you smiling back at me, you see me smiling at you and in here and you smile back. And smiles are infectious, y'all. In fact, good behavior and bad behavior, all behavior is contagious, so just practice what you want to see. Want somebody to smile at you? Smile first. Smile first. And you'll get the response. And if you don't, so what? Keep it moving. You are okay. It's not you. It's them. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I hoped that something I said helps you to be able to get out there and just do it. Experience the world and not lock yourself up in the house. Like my mama say, don't put your light under a bushel basket. Let your light shine. Remember that I love you and that the Creator loves you. And that should be enough, especially if you love you too. So until the next episode, child, peace, peace, power to the people. And I'm out, y'all. Bye.